Hi folks, today we're going to have a look at the uh, Olight Perrin 2, one of the latest offerings uh, from Olight in the head torch uh, department. Uh, comes nicely boxed there as you can see, uh, along with um, the charging cable, which for those of you who don't know, um, the magnetic charging tail cap, you don't need to keep on taking the battery out and so forth, it can be charged via this cable. Uh, we've also got a little lanyard and a lanyard loop there. A little device for pulling the lanyard through. Um, and a pocket clip. Um, along with, of course, the headband strap. And I think the, the way I like are going with this, well, I don't think they've said so on the web page. Um, is that they're aiming this really to be like a dual purpose light so you can use it with the lanyard if you want it the pocket clip if you want it as a handheld torch as well as being uh, a head torch uh, so let's have a quick look at the at the specifications the stuff it comes with the um, okay so we've got a turbo mode on there 2500 lumens um, and with that i'm going to get what's that say there two minutes uh, and then it'll drop down to 32%. Uh, I'll get a further 130 minutes, another 20% for 45 minutes. Um, in contrast to that, the high mode, 500 lumens, uh, will last continually for 240 minutes before starting to step itself down for an extra 30, and your medium and low there. So there's pretty impressive uh, total run times there, so long, so long as you're not using turbo. That will be... Um, an estimate on the on the heat uh, um, so it's got thermal regulation in what it will do it will it will step it down dependent upon that heat and I suppose the heat depends on where and how you're using it now one thing I did notice here that was quite um, noticeable because I've never seen this before with any of the Olight products they're actually saying you can use uh, other brands batteries hear me and then you've got the low battery warning in there Vibrate once every 30 seconds. Otherwise, it's, it's kind of pretty standard in terms of its water resistance um, and drop resistant. Now, I'll just pull out, um, bear with me, my H2R, just to give you a, a clue. And this kind of form factor, you know, where you've, I suppose you're in a bit of a dual purpose type light. Uh, the Perrin, as you can see, there's a little bit of a chunk in comparison with uh, the H2R. Uh, and that's because we're running from a, a 21700 as opposed to an 18650. And there's quite a considerable difference. Um, and that might be uh, an influence or decision factor for you, but trying to choose between the two. And it's basically down down to the run times. If you can tolerate the, um, you know, the, the extra weight, which I'm perfectly happy with, then you probably go for the parent too. If not the H2R, that, that's you know still a fantastic light. Um, one of the other key differences as well, we've got a proximity sensor in there. Um, and the funny things proximity sensors are, you can't, you've got to kind of figure out how they work. Now, I've put a section on the end of this. I'll take it out and show you how it works in the field and so forth. But after that, if you're really interested in knowing exactly how this proxy sensor works, there's some extra bits on there where I've uh, dunked it in water and so forth. But in short, um, if you obstruct the lens completely, it will shut off after 60 seconds. Uh, the proximity sensor uh, will dim the light only in turbo mode. So if we don't completely obstruct the lens and we put something close to it, uh, the sensor will only dim down in turbo. Um, and this sensor is sensitive to rain. Um, so it's not going to work very well during heavy rain. But you can learn a little bit more about that if you want towards the end of the video. Uh, the other thing I've noticed as well, um, this is the, um, the band that it comes with. Uh, you know where you kind of, you know, kind of slot the the torch and then kind of push it through. Um, if we have a look at what what came with the H two R, uh, 
with this magnetic holder and then it's much easier to operate clip. I much prefer this design and I don't know why they've really moved away from it. I mean, I would have preferred, personal preference, but I would have preferred to see that design but enlarged, of course, for the parent. Now, one of the other things as well to point out with the parent and Olight, why did you do this? Let me show you. Because our 21700, 4000 milliamp hour. However, um, one of the, another one of the latest torches, the M2R, comes with a 5000. Why have we put a 4000? capacity battery in one of your latest products when you've actually got the 5000s available hmm. I don't know so let's take it out um, and we'll have a look to see what it can do um, after dark I've got the parent now on its lowest mode literally at my feet which as we can see uh, it's not really getting any distance on that but in tension or that type of thing that's that's perfectly usable uh, let's take him up one. Medium. That tree there is about 10 metres. Uh, but certainly no trouble seeing anything in the immediate vicinity. I've got to a high which is 500 lumens. And as we can see now, that's that's uh, considerably better, certainly for out, outdoor use. Um, and this is the mode that it will hold without any uh, heat problems. For can't remember what it said the runtime was, but it was uh, it was quite considerable. And that's what you'll get using the twenty one seven hundred battery. And to be honest with you, I mean that's uh, are we actually going to need much more of that out of a headlight? Uh, well, if you do. You can then pop him up to turbo. I mean, and that is just. I'm not moving the torch, by the way, I'm just moving the camera so you can get an idea of how much light this thing is actually putting out all around us in all directions. But towards the end of that path there um, as we can see it's not it's not going to get into the distance um, it's not designed to to be honest with you you know as opposed to you know perhaps a little bit more of a throwy torch I don't think there's really much more to um, to show you, is there? Um, it's not getting particularly warm, to be honest with you. But, uh, but what I will do, I'll um, I'll carry on using it a bit more. I might come back, I might not, uh, depending how it um, if and how it behaves with the thermals. I'm expecting about two minutes. Um, that turbo. Thanks folks. A little bit further on now with the uh, parent probably about half a mile, ten minutes, something like that. Um, warm. It's running warm at best. It is a little bit breezy in it. It is sort of winter in the UK. Um, but I'm thinking that Olight may have been a little bit conservative uh, with their step down at two metres. That's obviously temperature regulated, so you know, if you're using it in the Sahara Desert, then it's going to heat up a lot quicker, of course, isn't it? Uh, but where I'm using it at the moment, it's not stepped down at all. And to be honest, I wasn't really expecting it to. It, ju it just really isn't getting hot. Um, and distance-wise, you know, when I said it wasn't making it down to the end of the path.
at 100 metres it is reaching that distance you know but not not you know not quite as well as you know a, a kind of proper thrower if you like but it's not that bad is it and I'm really really surprised oh let me put my blooming camera on it um, I'm really surprised about the uh, the heat to be honest with you um, how well it's handling it uh, but just stick around for my comments in the, at the end concerning actually using it in, in the rain because I, I was probably going to conclude that if your turbo was only going to run for a couple of minutes then perhaps just don't use it on turbo mode in the rain but the trouble is now I've used it and I suppose Olight have made a little bit of a rod for their own back now uh, because now I'm using it and it does hold the turbo and as you can see it's still not cut down then yeah do you know what I would want to use this in the rain and now I am interested as to whether um, we can disable that um, that proximity sensor or not um, I kind of resign myself to having a 500 lumen light for any great amount of time but no that is not the case and it's still going strong and if anything it's feeling a bit cooler I mean let me just uh, cycle through its modes for you again and our turbo that, you know, that, that's really really impressive that blooming proximity sensor though you'll have to make up your own mind about that I think we've got that about right now uh, in the manual it also says that if we obscure the lens for more than 60 seconds then you can just about see the camera there can't in the background but to what extent do we need to obscure the lens before the proximity sensor decides it needs to cut off and it's not on turbo at the moment um, I already tested it a little bit earlier on um, and when the lens was severely obstructed um, as in turned upside down and placed against a hard surface then regardless of the mode it turned off after uh, 60 seconds and as we can see there um, more or less on the queue uh, it turned off at 60 seconds okay let's simulate rain rather severely we should say uh, by immersing the light into this uh, jug of water I'll start the timer again and what I'm trying to ascertain here is whether the uh, proximity sensor is going to class uh, water on the lens an extreme amount of water on the lens really isn't it uh, but is that water on the lens uh, going to cause the proximity sensor to um, uh, to turn off after 60 seconds it certainly hasn't prompted any uh, any step down uh, in power Okay, so we're well over the 60 seconds there and uh, it appears as though no amount of water on the lens uh, is going to con it into actually turning off. Yeah, so the, um, <clears throat> the turbo mode won't uh, operate correctly uh, with water on the lens. Um, let me try it on high. Okay now now we're on high but I think we already know what's going to happen here isn't it? No no amount of water is going to cause it cause the proximity centre to um, to kick off. No amount he says. I think you can handle that, can't it? 